Hello guys, Absolute Dawless here coming at you with another One Piece video, and in today's One Piece video I have for you some test piece. And in today's test piece we're going to go ahead and be testing Gecko Moria, got three games for you guys, and we're going to start off by playing Sindri, sending the top five cards from our deck to the trash. We we'll pass it over to the Lore Player, what is he going to do? He's got two Don, but he just goes ahead and passes, doing nothing. We go ahead and put one onto our Moria, swing, play the Perona from trash, and take a card out of his hand, meaning that he's going to have to go ahead and take another life, or dick trash a card, but he does choose to take that life he goes ahead and draws for term for don to use what will he do with it because well we've got the perona we've got the moria he's gonna go ahead and play a shuria and an otama to go ahead and decrease that perona to then go ahead and play a beppo from hand I meaning he's got a pretty decent board he's got the ability to ramp he's got the blocker that can pretty much be whatever our leader's attack is let's see what we're gonna do it looks like we're debating playing the suru which we do play going ahead and decreasing that beppo swinging into his law and then we play absalom which is gonna go ahead and put two cards back into the deck and kill the beppo Pretty good. Getting rid of his ramp is always good, especially against Law, because you want to go ahead and deal with it. But he does go ahead and block with the Shuria and counters with one card in hand. He then goes ahead and plays Raiju to go ahead and draw two cards. Swings, five at life. We counter with the Branu, which isn't really necessary after, obviously, turn one, just because we want it to trash cards. We've already got a big trash. We go ahead and swing for seven, though. Play the Perona from the trash. Pretty good, pretty good, meaning that he's going to have to discard a card from his hand. Got to love that Perona in Moria just because it is a very strong card, being able to control the hand and keeping them under five cards. So he goes ahead and blocks with the Shuria. Will he counter for one? He'll counter for two with a Sanji. And then we're going to go ahead and swing five into life with the Sindri. Interesting. So instead of going for guaranteed life, we're going to go ahead and swing twice to go ahead and guarantee some cards out of his hand. Okay. We swing five with the Absalom as well, which is pretty decent there. Will he do anything in response is the question, though. Looks like he is just thinking here, thinking if he wants to counter it out or take the life. And he does choose to take the life. Okay. So he goes ahead and gets two Don, putting him up to six. He does have a decent swing on board, but he's going to go ahead and play a kid with a, well, Gordon, which will decrease the Perona and get rid of that. Okay, so he's got some swings on the board now, being able to probably clear the Sindri. And also he plays a Benton. Okay, a Benton. Mr. Two Bon Clay, not Benton. <laughs> and he goes ahead and swings six into our Absalom, which we just let die. And then he's probably going to end up swinging a five into this Sindri, I'd assume. But he is just swinging five with the Shuria. And he does kill the Sindri there. And then he swings six into life. We take it. We get a Gecko Moria, which is very good. So we're going to go ahead and play the Gecko Moria. Looks like I'm thinking of playing that Rob Lucci to go ahead and remove some cards. We are going to play the Rob Lucci and the Hell Meppo, which is going to allow us to remove the Kid and most likely that Otama as well. So we're going to go ahead and put three back. And then we're going to remove both of those. Put one on our lead. And then we swing into the Raju. I should have probably swung into the Shuria there. Just because the Shuria would have been a more deadly card. Being something that, because it's a blocker, of course. But he does counter out anyway. And what's the lore player's next move? He does have three characters. He's going to get a 9k swing with that Mr. Tubon Clay. And we use, oh, we get a, a Great Eruption trigger. Forcing him to discard a Gordon. That's very good for us. Okay, and the lore player has three swings left. It looks like he's going to go eight into life. Okay. And it looks like I'm debating if I want to counter this, because we do have the two Sindri's, and we do choose to take it instead. Then he's going to go ahead and swing another eight. No, he's going to swing a nine, which we just choose to counter. And then he's going to go ahead and return that to the bottom, play a killer slash kid. Very good rush card that can go ahead and go up to 7k instantaneously. We just go ahead and take it. And then he doesn't choose to swing the Shuria, but we did have the 1k counter, so we'd have been fine even if he did. Okay, so we swing five into life. We then swing six into life. And then he dies. So that was the first game, guys. Let's go into the next one now, which is against Sakazuki. And it looks like we didn't choose to mulligan, or we did choose. I didn't catch it at the start. I do apologize. But the Sakazuki player is going first. He plays a Tashigi, which allows him to go ahead and add a Hound Blaze from the looks of it. We go ahead and play Branu, which adds us an Ice Age. He plays his own Branu, going ahead and adding... I think it was a Suru there. And then he's going to swing five. I just choose to take it. No reason not to. Plays another Tashigi. Going ahead and adding an Ice Age. That's very good for him. And then we're going to go ahead and swing seven into life. Discarding a Perona to go ahead and play a Perona. 
mean he's going to have to trash a card from his hand. He trashes a Borsalino and does take the life. Okay. So what's the Sakazuki players play on this turn? Because theoretically, he could go ahead and get rid of both of our characters. But he's going to go ahead and play a Rebecca here, adding back from Trash a Sabo. And is he going to play anything off this Rebecca? Potentially a Branu? Like, just to get the search right. If Well, if he has it, he has to have the Branu to do that. He could also play, obviously, a Hina, which wouldn't be bad either. But it looks like he isn't playing anything or is contemplating playing that card from hand. And he plays nothing. So he swings six into life. Uh, we counter with a Perona. And then we draw for turn and get a Borsalino. So we go ahead and use our Great Eruption on the Rebecca. We're going to play Absalom from the Trash, putting back the Great Eruption and the Ice Age, getting rid of the Rebecca and swinging six into life. Very good there. He counters with a 2k. We go ahead and swing another five. Okay, just getting rid of cards in his hand. Then we're going to go ahead and swing another five with the Branu. Okay, so we did take a life this turn, which is good for us. We've got him down to two. And we do have a pretty decent hand. And I believe we're on six Dom. So next time we can go ahead and play that Gecko Moria. Getting us more advantage, especially if he clears that Perona. So next time we're going to... Oh, so he goes, goes ahead and plays a Hina. Maybe he drew that for turn, but he's going to go ahead and also use that Hound Blaze he added earlier to go ahead and boost his Borsalino while also getting rid of the Absolute Lon. Sorry, uh, his Branu. Swings into the Perona for eight. We let it die. No reason to protect it there. Then he swings into the Branu as well. And it's our turn now. Okay, are we going to play this Gecko Moria is the question. Because he does have five cards in hand. He has a lot of characters. No, I'm going to go ahead and swing five into the Branu, taking out a character. And I'm going to go ahead and play the Gecko Moria, which is going to play two characters from the trash. So we play the Borsalino and we play the Branu, which doesn't add anything to hand, sadly. It does miss sometimes. It is unfortunate when it does. Okay, so it's now the Sakazuki player's turn. He's on nine Don. Lots of cards that he could potentially play. And we have a pretty good board with the Borsalino, with the Branu, with the Gecko Moria. Like, next turn we can go ahead and drop quite a lot of characters as well if we want. We could drop that Kuzan, that Borsalino. We can definitely play something from the trash. Probably a Perona, because I believe there's still one in there. Meaning we can decrease his hand size if he does keep it above 5. Or on 5 on the dot. But he's going to go ahead and swing 5. Counter for 1 with a Borsalino. Ice Age is the Gecko Moria, so he's probably going to go ahead and remove it. And he removes it with the Hound Blaze and boosts his Hina. Probably the good play there. And he goes ahead and plays a Subbo as well. Alright, so Subbo's going to be a blocker for him. Which is good. Okay. And then he's going to swing 9 into life? Yep, he swings 9 into life. We take it and we get Rob Lucci. Would have been good if he didn't play that Subbo. But it's fine. So we get a Perona to hand. So what we could probably do here is swing a couple of fives. We'll probably swing with Gecko Moria first for like six, take two. But we're going to go ahead and play the Kuzan. Okay. Interesting. Then we put three onto the brand new swing six. Okay, so we're going to do a double six swing. Pretty good, pretty good. And he counters for 2k. Swing another six, trashing the... Rob Lucci, which is going to play out the, um, I forgot the card's name. Uh, it plays out the Hogback, which allows us to add the Perona to hand by returning two from trash to the bottom of the deck. Okay, pretty good. So we're getting a bit of setup here, and we get a bit of recyclability, having five 2Ks in hand, which is very good. But he is on 10 Don. And you'll probably have to remove that Kuzan, otherwise it's just free advantage, right? Okay, so what's the Sakazuki player's play here? He has the ability to swing quite a bit. He could swing multiple fives with the Tashigis, the Hina, the leader. He could also go ahead and play a four cost this turn if he did do that. So that's not a bad play. He's already cycled his hand, trashing a Rob Lucci. What is his play from this point onwards? He plays his own Gecko Moria. Okay. Plays a Rob Lucci and a Suru. So he's going to go ahead and get rid of probably... Yep, he gets rid of the Kuzan. Because he can't get rid of more than one, sadly, with that play. He would have needed at least one more card. He's going to go ahead and swing six into life. We just counter with the Perona. 
Swings another six. Do we take this one? We block and count with the Epsilon. Alright, so we've got a lot of 2Ks in hand, but nothing great. But we're going to go ahead and decrease the Subba. We're going to swing and we're going to play the Absalom from Trash here, which is going to kill the Subba. Meaning he's not going to be in a good position here. So it looks like I'm just debating what I want to put to the bottom of deck. Kill the Subbo, swing 7 into life. He does choose to take it. And then we're going to slap it, all, well, 9 onto the Hogback. 9 into life with Hogback. He counters for with 3 cards. And we could go for the gamble here, swing with the Bossolino, but we do not do that. We just choose to pass turn. With 4 2Ks in hand and a blocker on board, highly doubt we're going to die this turn. But he goes ahead and plays Rebecca at the Subbo from Trash. Most likely going to drop that Subbo as well. Setting up multiple blockers. But at this point, the Subbo... Well, the Sakazuki player is in a bad point, and he just chooses to scoop there. He was in a bad position, but this time we're up against a Yamato player, guys. So let's go ahead and see. Starting off with a Branu, Hogback, and <laughs> Gekko Moria with, two, with a 2k counter Suru and an Ice Age. And with what we're going first, so we can't really play anything in our hand. Alright, so what have we got against the Yamato? So the Yamato just passes as well. We're going to go ahead and put two onto the one horn to the Hogback. Use the ability trashing the Hogback and then swinging into life by also playing the Hogback. So setting up a character on board is not bad whatsoever. Yamato is going to swing for nine and we just choose to take it, meaning that his Okikus are now live if he has any in life. We swing five into life here. He counters it, swinging another five into life. He chooses to counter that as well. Interesting. So we go ahead and play a Sabo, draw two. We drew Borsalino and a uh, Sabo. So we go ahead and trash a Borsalino and also trash a Hogback. Okay, he's going to go ahead and swing nine again. We block and we let it die. He's then going to play a Hiyori, probably stacking his life with a Okiku. All right. Put one onto my leader, swing six, trashing one card from hand. We trashed a Branu, I think that was. And then we played a hog back, and we're going to put two back to go ahead and add back a Perona, probably. We do add back the Perona, and he does play in a Kiku, so I was correct. Okay. We also play a Borsalino to have that blocker on the board. Okay, so what's the next play? He's got six cards in hand. He goes ahead and plays a Shura. Probably going to go ahead and search out an Ohm. He searches a Reject Dial. That's a very good card if I'm on one life, but sadly he's not on one. And also the Reject Dial cannot deal with Borsalino. But he's going to swing eight into the Hogback. Hogback does die. Obviously after using the leader ability to put two Don on the Okiku. Plays a Onami to go ahead and swing Banish, 9k, double attack into life. And we swing, count, block with Borsalino and counter. Okay, we swing five into his life. He does choose to counter. We swing 6 into life, not using ability. Most likely going to play that Gecko Moria in hand instead. And then we're going to go ahead and play a Borsalino and a Helmeppo. Decreasing the Cracker for no reason. Okay, he goes ahead and plays a Hody Jones. Okay, so he's got a pretty good board right now, but no life. Goes 8 into life. We take it, getting two 2Ks. Very strong. Okay. He's going to swing nine. Okay. We take it and get another 2k. Our life was stacked this game. And he's going to play... <laughs> okay. We're going to go ahead and counter that with after he uses Amaru to boost his Okiku. And then we're going to counter that as well. And we survive and most likely just swing big for game. So that last game was actually pretty close, guys. But this is the deck profile, guys. I've been kind of working on it a bit. Thinking like the ratios that I would personally want to play if I am going to play Moria. And in these games, I feel like I showed you what the deck is essentially capable of. It's a deck that focuses on gaining advantage gradually. Using Perona to decrease the opponent's hand size. Using Absalom with cards like Ice Age and Great Eruption to remove problem cards that would give your opponent more advantage and blockers and then we obviously play stuff like Kuzan and even stuff like Gecko Moria because Kuzan can go ahead and decrease cards and then the Gecko Morias can go ahead and revive your cards like all of this is basically an advantage game 
where you're going to try and decrease and control the opponent's board as much as possible, with Hogback being able to recycle, Perona being able to remove, Kuzan being able to draw and decrease, Gecko being revival. This deck has a lot of potential, guys. So I hope you did enjoy this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Test Piece. And if you want to see more content with Gecko Moria, please tell me in the comment section below because it's actually a really fun deck. And I hope you do like the new style of Test Piece because I've kind of been thinking on how I want to do this. And I felt like this was a good way to try out. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Absolute Doorless signing out. Later.